Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, to those of you who are here, welcome back. And uh, this is what we call a very soft opening because we only announced it on Daily Mass starting on Wednesday in Facebook and things. So this is uh, kind of, it's kind of a nice way to get started and see how, how things are going to work. The new, the new abnormal is what I call it uh, for a while. But it's good to have you back. Um, the, the, uh, we are allowed to have up to 250 in here as long as we have six feet around each household. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, in any case, um, our Lord is, we started uh, opening, we opened up yesterday on the Feast of the Sacred Heart, which is why that picture is still here. And uh, Jesus welcomes us into his heart and has suffered with us. You know, every person that's been exiled or lonely or sick or whatever has been going on, Jesus has been with us, and today he tells us that not even one hair of our head is, uh, every hair of our head has been counted, and so we begin by acknowledging our Lord's love for us as we acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth.
that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are now on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. The Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe the mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pat pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I almost said, let there be light, you know, that gospel, but I knew our Lord wouldn't appreciate that. How did that happen? <laughs> I pushed the all on light button back there, but apparently they didn't all come on. You know, dim bulb. <laughs> I, <laughs> there are enough people in here to laugh, that's my problem. <laughs> This is a soft opening. Like I said, we, we just announced this Wednesday, right after the governor uh, lifted the, I think it was Wednesday, phase two. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's a privilege really to get this started. Our new system, it looks simple, but it took all week to figure out. And it's good to have us kind of a, a lighter crowd for the beginning. Um, however, uh, this gospel is, is incredible. I just love this. In, in a way, there's a bit of, of, uh, of things that are troubling to hear and a lot that's good to hear. When Jesus went back to the positive, the light came right on. Do you notice that? As soon as he finished, do not, do, but do, he said, be afraid of the one who could put, who uh, can send you to Gehenna. Don't be afraid of somebody in the world or the coronavirus. Be afraid of your soul being uh, damaged, you know, too much. And then the light came on. He says, but I've counted every one of your ha hairs on your head. Uh, I, want, I want you so much to be with me. I'll do everything I can. I want to tell you a story 
some, uh, I think it was about a year ago now already, I had a rather old uh, Mac computer, which I'd gotten on a refurb from Apple, so it was already, it was already about two years old when I bought it. I thought it was very smart, it worked great, it was getting very old, and there was a few issues, and I decided that it was time to get a new one. They finally came out with, with, with one that I wanted, and so I surfed around trying to find a good deal for a trade-in. Uh, I had I had sent it to Apple, and then they, it, for some reason, it was still locked. It was not, I couldn't. Anyway, they sent it back to me, and they wouldn't try again, so I, I found a good deal, really good deal. So I sent this thing in. They sent me a box, and I, I packed it up and sent it in. And I think they were going to give me $1,500 for that thing, so it was really, really good deal, you know. And so about three days later, I got an email, and they said, take a look at this we are lowering your estimate for your computer. And it came with about 10 pictures. And those of you who know computers would probably appreciate this, but I didn't know about this particular phenomenon. They, of course, they opened the back because they're going to swap out the batteries and all the things they do to refurb a computer. And as soon as they opened the back, the back hatch, these batteries expanded. They looked like balloons on the Thanksgiving Day Parade in Macy's. I mean, they were literally two inches, three of them were two inches above the, the rim. All gas, all explosive. They said to me, if even one spark had come out of the inside of that thing, that would have either burst into flames or blown up. Imagine being on vacation and we had some kind of a power surge. Hello, new rectory. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe, hello, new pastor, if I happen to be in bed that night. <laughs> if I have to go, I have to go, but that's not the way I want to go. So, so you know, they, and they, I got a pretty good deal in spite of that, but they said, they said, you were very fortunate to turn this in. I had no idea. It, there was no symptoms. It's like having cancer. You know, we just lost one of our good prisoners, Norma Bernardi. I'll, I'll just say that, you know, as she was on a cruise with me in October looked as healthy as a horse, and her burial is this week. And, and it's, it's kind of similar. There's so many people I see that we, we don't know what's going on in the world. We weren't expecting the coronavirus. We don't expect, we, we plan our lives for every contingency. Some people are preppers, but, but you can't prep for everything. We just don't know what's coming in life. But the thing about this, this image, it's been in my mind ever since then, is that we, we work so hard on externals appearances and the health of the body. How many people are concerned about what their face looks like? By next week, y'all will be wearing masks as will be required next week, except me up here in the sanctuary. So, um, but I have 30 feet around me, see, but at communion, I'll be wearing a mask. So, but the point is, with, with masks on, none of y'all look very good. So we don't have, you don't have to worry about your face. <laughs> now, I always say, the more my face is covered up, the better I look, so I'm looking for a real big one. <laughs> you know, just think about eyes. Um, <laughs> Uh, I was on an airline a couple of years ago where the, where the flight attendants had only eyes showing. Anyway, I should, are we being taped? Yeah, I guess we are. <laughs> um, how many people are afraid now because of this virus? We all feel vulnerable. Some, some don't feel masks are necessary. Half the doctors in the country say we don't, half we do. Every state's got some different, something different, and I don't know which, what's what. We're just being, everything we're doing here is what the bishop has asked us to do, okay? Uh, he's interpreting what, what the state wants, and this is what we're doing. I'm not making any decisions on my own here. But the point is, all of it's assigned to us. We're so worried about our health, and yet, as I've mentioned many times, C.S. Lewis had a line that I've never forgotten since I was young. He said, death, war, and plagues, and sickness do not increase death in the world. Death is total for every generation. And that's why our Lord says, don't be afraid if someone kills the body. Don't be afraid, because we know where we're going as Christians. There's a bright future ahead. We've never needed, needed this vision more than right now. The world's in such turmoil. Our country's in such turmoil. Oh my gosh, it feels like 1968 again. I think it was 67 with all those riots. And the Democratic National, if you're old enough to remember this, it was, it was scary. You know, Martin Luther King had, had been killed and 
RFK and, and he thought the world was coming to an end, but we keep our vision on heaven. That's what St. Trez said. He, Let us keep our eyes on heaven, the one and true object of our labors. And that means while we're being concerned, so the world is so concerned about a virus, there are so many other things that, that we could possibly die of besides that. And yet, how many think about their souls? What's, what, what's feeding my soul? If I'm watching constant pornography, I'm going to become this sickness. It's a sickness. It's, it's, a, um, it's an addiction, you know. Uh, we know that, that certain foods and things we do can ultimately hurt us. But what kind of person am I becoming? Uh, we are becoming someone. We're in a between life, birth, and death. I don't remember my birth, but uh, I have pictures of proof that it happened, you know. But we've, around, I don't know, whatever age it is, we become self aware. You know, we become aware that we're alive. We take life for granted, don't we? And, and then uh, at some point it comes to an end, and another person comes in. Uh, it just, uh, I visited several people in the hospital last week and I called a parishioner that just had a new baby and it happened on the same day. One plane came in and one plane took off. And that's, that's we live in an airport and the sooner we think about that, the more we think about that, the more we're going to understand about life. Life is not about possessions. It's not even about health. It's not about how much we look. and it, It's really about relationships, our faith with God, what kind of person am I becoming? Am I a generous person? Am I a person of love? Uh, see, our Lord is counting every hair on our heads. It is very, it, I, it's been very interesting. Three months without parishioners, I don't know how you felt, but it's been, it's, I, all of us, I think all of us pastors have to go see a clergy psychiatrist. If, <laughs> I mean, I didn't realize how connected I was to, to all of you because suddenly everybody's gone. It's Sunday morning in the parking lot. I, have, I had Sundays off. I haven't had Sundays off since 1982. <laughs> I didn't have them off at the airline. Here I'm a priest, three months of Sundays off. Can you believe that? Uh, and it's, it, you're kind of weirded out by this whole thing. And, um, and yet in the midst of all that, God is speaking to us. Uh, he has a word for us. Every hair of our head is counted. And in the midst of that, a lot of people have been coming up to me and as this has gone on, um, I get opinions on one side and the other about whether uh, all what we're doing is, you know, is necessary, unnecessary. There are conspiracy theories. Many people, <laughs> there's just a lot of a lot of different opinions out there. I'm listening to them, and ones I don't agree with, I want to hear also because I want to be pastor of everyone, and I don't really know what's going on. It sometimes it seems like this is the first time in the 2,000 year history of the church that that almost every church on earth was closed on Easter and we lived through it this is our time it's not a time to be afraid we were born for this era we were called to be lights of the world in this era and you know after being closed for three months some won't come back and others that have been watching on TV and didn't realize how what we actually do here will come and it's a sorting out and that's what our Lord wanted a purifying of the heart uh, what, do I, what really matters to me? We find out our families mean a lot to us. Some are scared. They, you know, we've got older, older folks that, that we're worried about. Legitimately, I think, are people that are compromised. And, and yet, our soul, we don't so much. Um, our Lord says this wonderful thing. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed. No secret that will not be known. And he's, he's in a way, it's a warning. Because when my body comes, it goes back to the earth, which it will, all that, all that health foods and everything else. I used to do all this vitamin pills and health foods. It didn't do me a darn, no offense, but it, it didn't do me a darn bit of good. Uh, I, I take a Costco vitamin pill now, and that's about it. And I mean, I don't go back to all hamburgers, but the point is, is that this, this body is going to go back to dust. And then at that moment, my soul, which is crystal clear, will come before God. And that's why we have the, doc, the doctrine of purgatory, which is in the Bible, is like, I might need to go to the car wash here before I come in, you know. Depends on whether we allowed Christ to wash us in his blood before death. We took him up on his offer. For Catholics, it's confession. For, for serious sins, we ask forgiveness, you know. But what I am is going to be known to everybody, and it's not going to change. I mean, who we are, the sacrifice, we can only make sacrifices in this life. We can only love when it hurts or when it's a sacrifice, when it's difficult, here. We can only do small things for God here while we don't see him. 
Then we see him, that's it. So it's really important to understand that, that this has been an opportunity to pray in a different way, to hopefully be purified. I, I, I certainly grew in my priesthood. I've never had a crisis of the priesthood. I've always known who I am, but I sure had one. These, this last three months, it's like uh, a pastor is supposed to be with people and there ain't any around here, you know. But you, everybody was behind the looking glass. That's what was so funny about it. And it was, it's purifying in a way. Uh, having the, the two missionaries here they're so different than I am in a way and yet it was so it was great to have them here they, they left the minute we opened they came the minute we closed it was all grace and uh, and they ran into a relative of Governor Brown's in Denver so they said that we can't get away from Oregon no matter how hard we try <laughs> they called me and they said they said uh, God even winked at us and, and said uh, come back soon <laughs> you know so <laughs> Another thing that's interesting is if there, and there, throughout history, there have always been people in power trying to pull strings behind, behind the scenes. People, that's why our Lord said, it's a grave danger to have too much money and power because all human beings have that temptation to begin to manipulate and control. I'm not indicting any individual or group, but there probably are things behind the scenes. Not, not, I'm not speaking of any particular theory or conspiracy or anything, but the point is, whatever's been going on, and you know, whether it's, I mentioned some of the things in 1968, even, even JFK's assassination, people still worry, wonder what's going on. We are going to know everything. Don't worry. It's all going to come out, all at once. All of us are going to see the place we had in human history, what we were meant to do, what mission we have. For us, it's just basically Kaiser, wherever we live, you know? It's just to make a difference right where I'm at and not to, we can't influence the world, I can't change these things, but I, our soul can be purified and I can make a difference right here because our Lord said, and here's the, here's the secret that I think is wonderful here. There's a movie being filmed, just like right now. Our Lord, he does not promise the right to privacy. Get this clear right now is that everything in our lives is going to be viewed by us and him and probably everybody else from what I've heard. <laughs> we don't know that for sure. But what we are is going to be seen by everybody. And this is why uh, our life is a test. It's meant to, for us to grow. And the people that may see our, the end of our lives and our flaws will not judge us because they were the same as us. We all are the same flawed human beings that need our Lord. We're not going to arrive in heaven perfect, let's face it. The older I get, the more I want his mercy. Because uh, I thought I'd be Fulton Sheen by now, but it's going in the wrong direction. <laughs> you know, but we do make slow progress, and our Lord is very good to us. He says, people are worried about the wrong things. Some people are going to choose hell. Why? Because they lived in hell all their lives. And heaven is going to look terrible to them. They're going to see themselves as they really are, and they won't want to be purified. They want to go where they belong, you know, with other people like themselves. It is a doctrine. It is in, Christ talks about that more than heaven. I don't want to bring it up, but he does. And he, it's like a parent saying, don't touch that flame. You're going to get burned. It shall does, you know. So our Lord says, if we don't have a choice, we're potted plants. We're just going to get transplanted into a bigger pot. You know, We are free human beings. Christ wants to be chosen and loved for himself, not for his gifts. It's not, it, it, he wants us to choose him in one way or another, whether we're Christian or not. We're choosing him by the way we live, and by the way we act, and by our faith. And for his communion today, somebody's choosing him uh, with the first communion today. So we get to witness that. And like I've been doing the last six weeks, first communions and confirmations. And so it, it, although our Lord puts a few zingers in here to make us think, you know, about life, and it's so pertinent to what we've all been going through these last three months about we don't know where the virus came from, we don't know why, we don't know what's coming next, we don't know why this, why that. And our Lord says, don't worry, it's all going to be shown to you. Remember that? last judgment when all the nations are gathered around we will be the Americans we'll find out then what our role was corporately St. Ed's our family whatever group we were in we'll be in all those groups at the same time and find out what our life was really all about 
and, and what was really going on. And some people are going to be pretty darn embarrassed because it's all going to be shown like a movie. I mean, pretty interesting, um, except my part. I don't, want my, I don't want to be in the movie. <laughs> but yeah, I can't get out of it either, guys. I'm just like you. I, I'm going to ask for God's mercy like we have all over this place. And it ends on a wonderful high note. And for some people, it's easier. I wish Father Nile was here because I'd say, it's easier to count the hairs on your head than it is mine. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go. I won't, he might be listening. I better be quiet. Um, every hair on your head has been counted. Can you imagine? That's how much God loves us. That's how much He knows us. Every cell on your body. I created you. I love you. I've redeemed you. I want you with me. He's going to do everything He can to make us choose Him. He doesn't want anybody to go that direction. If anybody does, they're choosing it themselves. He doesn't send anybody there. We ourselves have to choose. That's, we do have that right to choose. That's what we're here for. Choose him or not him. And so he says, don't be afraid. You're worth more than a flock of sparrows. And I know each one of those by name. And I know you. And I know what you've been through. And every bit of it has meaning. Nothing is by chance. Everything is with God. I could give you a whole sermon on, the, on all the incredible coincidences and miracles associated with those two that were here. Uh, we were so fortunate. Do you know how many people were watching those holy hours? Thousands of people. Do you think it was a, a, co a coincidence that they ended up here across the street and got stuck here? They weren't planning on spending three months at St. Ed's, I can tell you that. But their superior knew what they were. He saw the benefit of them being here and going to Europe. They would have been quarantined and could do nothing. So they stayed here and they blessed we had people from all over the country and all over the world were watching that thing. Um, it's unbelievable. And God has a plan for each of us that is exactly the same. And so we, we have to look for those signs, the wonderful gospel that while there's a, a little bit of a warning in it and a real insight that others are not going to see because they're not listening, but we also know that we are children of God. He loves us and he loves us with a greater love than, than we could possibly comprehend. take all the cards out for I don't know how long but I believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God born of the Father before all ages God from God light from light true God from true God begotten not made consubstantial with the Father through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer to the Lord our prayers and thanksgiving. For all the members of the church, may the Lord guide us in finding ways to show love to each person we encounter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in justly serving those whom they represent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved fathers, living and deceased, especially for those whose names are on the altar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For safe travel for our mission priests, Father Nial and Father Corbinian, and the family of Mary Congregation, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Norma Bernardi, Josefina Epotito, and Jesus Sanchez, Jesse Sanchez, may we know the peace and may they know the peace and comfort of God's eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those on our prayer chain and for all other prayer intentions we hold quietly in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pope Francis uh, asked that this next week be a prayer, a week for prayer for religious freedom throughout the world. Many countries are gravely oppressed in their, in their freedoms. So we uh, say a special prayer to God that he may encourage and help those who are repressed and for greater religious freedom and protections. Throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us with the greatest love. Help us in turn to love you in return by our words and deeds through Christ our Lord. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by, here by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the, members of, among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Alexander our Bishop, Peter our Assistant Bishop with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, may we strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Edward, Saint Clare, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. continue to say the prayer of spiritual communion because many of our flock are not able to come yet for various reasons. They can receive a spiritual communion when they're watching this on um, whatever media they're using. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
you're at my side, your rod and your staff, my comfort and my
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by this sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Please consider being a Eucharistic minister especially at the 10.30 a.m. Mass. We are ramping back up into weekly service. We need you. New confession times coming for this week, Tuesday and Wednesday at 6.45 p.m. The mission priest's addresses are in the bulletin. All the, holy, all the holy hours that they offered are available as recordings to you on YouTube or on our website. As a reminder, Brad is providing weekly Bible study he is releasing short videos covering the upcoming Sunday readings. The videos are available on our parish's YouTube channel. Visit our website for the link and start watching today. There are Father's Day prayer intention cards in the vestibule and over in the hall outside the parish office. These cards will be placed on the altar all during the month of June. Food boxes will be handed out this Monday, the 22nd, from 3 to 6 p.m. The community dinner is Wednesday, June 24th, from 4 to 6 p.m., takeout dinners only. We have three funerals this week, Monday the 22nd, funeral for Jesse Sanchez at 2 p.m., Tuesday the 23rd, funeral for Josefina Epitito at 10 a.m., and Thursday the 25th, funeral for Norma Bernardi at 11 a.m., preceded by a rosary at 10.30 reception following in the parish hall. We are discontinuing reserving masses online. We are allowed a maximum of 250 in each building. We will count and when, the, when we reach the maximum number, we will direct you to the other buildings. Actually, that's an upper limit. The other buildings, well, we won't have that many, of course. It's what it is, is uh, six feet around each household. So we're kind of uh, gonna be evaluating the situation. This building holds over 800 with, with the balcony and the back open. So, uh, we, you know, so we figure 200, 225. So we have a, we have a clicker back there and you, w the names we're putting in the basket are only if we have to contact you because of a virus thing. We're not giving it to the archdiocese or anybody else. It just simply goes in a bag. And then whoever was in that building, if we had an issue, we would let you know. So you can bring your own little sheet of paper. All we need is a is household last name and a phone number or email. Just drop it in the basket. We're going to mail you a letter and some some of the ones that sheets that you can have to, to bring in. So that's that seems to be the simplest way of doing things. That sign up thing online was kind of a nightmare. So now it was a good idea, but but people a lot of our folks couldn't figure it out. So that's his ancient history now. Hopefully. Uh, happy Father's Day to everyone, in case I forget. Um, and thanks for everybody who's been supporting us financially. One third of our parish is on WeShare. It's very easy to do, and so uh, we're very grateful for that. Through this long desert we've had here. Uh, we all, there's a letter that I wrote that outlines everything the Archdiocese asked of us, which is in a bulletin. We strongly encourage you to take one home. We are not permitted to pass out bulletins. You must pick one up. They're on the side tables. If that doesn't work, we'll figure something else out next week. You know, we have to figure out what works for us. You know, we can't put them outside because they'll blow away. Uh, so, having said that, they're also online, and so you can keep up to date if you want to get on our email. We don't blast you all the time with them, but we do have been updating once a week with, with changes. So, those who heard about it are here tonight, you know, and many don't know that we're open, so next week we're open for business. We have, we're very blessed to have three buildings with three live streams. Nobody else in the area is able to do that. It, it takes a lot of technical stuff, but we already had it set up. So I think we'll have room for anybody that comes here. 
If you want to be in the sanctuary, especially next week, I suggest you come early, though, because we, we have a number limit here. Some actually want to go to the old church for old time's sake. We've had a number that want to enjoy that again. Never thought we'd ever have mass in that building again, but uh, you're welcome to do that. It'll be open for business, and uh, then the hall is the third choice. So that's that. Um, as of, I think, Wednesday or Thursday, masks are uh, required. Uh, also, it was very clear that anybody who is insisting on they don't want to wear a mask, you will not be denied entrance, okay? So just so you know that, uh, it's, it, it is going to be a choice ultimately of yours. It's, let me put it this way, strongly encourage. Uh, hi, I'm not, I, I have 30 feet around me. I cannot wear a mask when I'm doing uh, mass, but I will for communion because I've been ordered to by the bishop and uh, also we're thoroughly cleaning each surface between the masses we have somebody hired to do that so this should be the cleanest building in Kaiser I think uh, there's no holy water in the fonts we are not receiving uh, the the precious blood until further notice and there's no sign of peace I'm going out of my mind uh, <laughs> well all the all the cards are missing next week I was just thinking I get this living with Christ a little booklet I think we're gonna see if we can get a bulk order of that for anybody that wants that uh, make me sign up so anybody that wants to do the read, readings on Sunday I always did as a lay person I like to read along maybe we can get get those in your hands you can have your own and bring it home because we can't pass them out here so we'll see if we can get that going next week or two and each pen you notice you use the pen put it in the used one we're going to sterilize them and reuse them so we try to think of everything and also I have to say if you're compromised in any way or feel you're sick uh, you we still have the the um, dispensation and if you're if you're sick please do not come and if you feel vulnerable that's all right it may take a while for us to be confident again I noticed that when I go to I won't mention the stores, but it seems like there's an awful lot of confident people in there uh, bouncing around. I thought about calling us St. Saint, Saint Costco so we could get everybody in earlier, but, but... Well, somebody thought it was... Oh, I see Mr. Costco thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> well, I just thought it was kind of funny because, anyway, the point is, is that we're going to be very clean in here. we are do everything we can to make sure that this is a very safe environment for you. And so I think that's about it. We can't pass the basket for I don't know how long, so we have a... A giving box in the back to put your envelope in there. Never been, been very generous with this the last three months. We're very appreciative because we really have tried to be there for you every way we can. And the Adoration Chapel is still open. Uh, we, we keep this door propped open during the day so people can come in the church and pray. Not that way, that's locked. But so with a code you can get in or ask that from the office. It keeps everybody safe. That's another way that you can come and pray here. And there's more in the bulletin. So I think that's it. Happy Father's Day to all of you, and uh, welcome back. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. Awake of your slumber, arise in your sleep. Great Lord.